Hey everyone, this is Ergo Josh and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to redraw my very first original character, Soraya. Now this is what Soraya looks like. This is my very first original character that I drew five years ago, around 2013, 2014-ish. This was when I got my very first digital tablet and I was super excited to draw my own characters. But as you can tell, it's really lacking in a lot of ways. Actually, my two main critiques on this are the fact that the only reference I have to her being a space goddess is that she has this pretty boring space background and at the time I didn't even know what this hairstyle was but they're space buns. That would have been good if I knew what they were called but I didn't know so I'm not giving myself any <laughs> any points for that. Now you're probably wondering why it's super blurry and that's because unfortunately I did a terrible job at managing any of my artwork before 2017, so this is the best I could find from Google Images researching myself. So before I actually get into repainting her, I wanted to show you guys some redesigns I did. So the first design I'm gonna show you is in Procreate. This is a design that was more focused on, you know, making her a more cute anime character. Um, she still has the space buns there, and she has a little planetary, um, little space, uh, celestial bodies floating around her and she's naked because you know if she's a space goddess why does she need clothes let's just draw her naked and let's also make it easy by drawing her naked <laughs> but of course that wasn't good enough for your boy Josh so we had to redesign her again Soraya 3.0 we have right here she is now badass she doesn't look like she doesn't know anything about who she is or where she's going um, she looks like she's ready to defend the universe she's still got space buns as a matter of fact they're even bigger and she's got some more little hair streaks around to give her more character she's got a very specific set of little planetary bodies floating around her neck and maybe they're her power source who knows we can decide that later and i made the lower portion of her body actually um, just blacked out because what I'm going to do is have it represent stars and space and little celestial galaxies and stuff like that so that she looks really cool when she's fighting. She's just like a blur. She's actually just a goddess that's taken the form of a human and so she really doesn't need all the rest of the stuff that humans have under there. <laughs> so what I went ahead and did is I made a Pinterest board for everything that I would need to help me draw this character out. As you guys know, I'm still very new to colors and designing characters and all that. So it was really helpful for me to create a Pinterest board that would have everything I need. So if I go to my boards here, you can see I've made a board called the Project References. And then as a section under that, I called it Soraya, the name of my character. And then I collected images of all these galaxies, different characters and their skin tones and some color swatches. Speaking of color, that brings me to today's sponsor. This year, BenQ was kind enough to send me their PD3220U 4K monitor. This monitor has a beautiful 4K IPS display that supports 100% of the sRGB and Rec. 709 color spaces, as well as 95% of the DCI-P3 color space. The DCI-P3 color space is actually the same color space that the iPad Pro supports, so that means perfect color matching across the board. The monitor easily switches between that and multiple factory calibrated color modes at the press of a button. The monitor even comes with a unique calibration report to verify its color accuracy. The monitor itself has a robust plastic and aluminum built quality with one of the best, sturdiest stands I've ever used. There are also plenty of useful I.O. ranging from VGA all the way to the latest Thunderbolt 3 connection which is perfect for using as its secondary display for my iPad or compatible laptop. The 32-inch screen telescopes up and down while swiveling left, right, backwards, and forwards for the best viewing experience. Thanks to its color weakness mode and precision AQ color technology, it gives the best viewing experience for creators like myself while reducing eye strain on virtually any individual. Brightness plays a huge role in color perception, so the included hotkey puck allows you to change it on the fly from very dim to comfortably bright whenever you need it to. It also allows you to switch outputs instantly, which is excellent for me because I often want to see what I'm painting on a different angle, but also occasionally switch back to the reference I'm looking at on my computer. Now, 32 inches is pretty big, but perfect for me to multitask on one screen, which is also better for productivity anyway. And when I'm not working, it has HDR10 content support, so I can enjoy entertainment content the way it was meant to be enjoyed. Overall, the PD3220U is a creator-first display that focuses on ergonomics and color accuracy without compromising on quality, functionality, and aesthetics. Links to the product will be in the description box below. 
So now that we're finished with the sponsor, thank you so much, BenQ, for sponsoring this video. I can go back and after downloading all of my materials, I'm gonna get started and bring them all into Procreate and hopefully start painting this thing. I'll keep in touch with you guys a little bit along the way and tell you about the steps and the process I'm taking and hopefully this thing looks amazing when I'm done. Hey everyone, I'm back and I'm finally getting started with the painting. <laughs> um, what I'm doing now is just adding in some of my references into the canvas so that I can use them later. And then eventually I decide to bring up the main reference to the left of the uh, iPad screen and use that so that I can pretty accurately get the uh, rendering for the face, even though I stylize the face quite a bit. I'm making it black and white first because I planned that, you know, to give myself an easier time with the color, I'm going to shade it um, a little bit more monotone um, before I go ahead and jump into the colors. So what I'm doing now is I'm just erasing some of the guidelines that were left there. And then I noticed that the ear was completely empty. So I quickly added some sketch, sketch lines in there so to give me a guidance point for later on in the painting. I decided to go with a little bit light, uh, a little off, a little lighter tone of pink to render. Um, I thought this would help me out in the coloring later on, but uh, it kind of confused me. <laughs> I wasn't really rendering as well as I usually do, and I kind of switched back and forth between that uh, very light peach color and the red color to do some of the shading. So what I just did right there is add some thickness to the lower eyelid, which is something I really love to do. Um, I just decided the thickness would be represented by pressing really hard on the brush and that worked out really well. And now I'm adding in some of the uh, bigger shading with, the, uh, um, with my soft brush, um, adding a lot more bigger zones like the neck and then the ridge on the corner um, of her face there and then the nose, I smoothed that out all the way, adding some value to all of her skin. A lot of this was experimental. I wasn't sure exactly how this was going to look at all <laughs> at the final, at the end of it, but I knew that, you know, the best way would just be to go ahead and jump into it and get started. So I knew that shading with at least two colors to get me started instead of just one would definitely put me on track um, for a successful colored piece in the end. So now you can see me adding some of the uh, shadows to her neck and her um, torso a little bit with the collarbones. I didn't want to do too much because the more detail you add there, the older the uh, character tends to look and it's just really not necessary with my style. I'm trying to add some variation to the lips right now and uh, darken up the upper lip because that's hidden and doesn't really receive as much light and then make the lower lip appear more rounded while also getting rid of some of the sketch lines I had so that the form looks like a real painting. This is something that took me forever to be able to do. Um, if you look at my original artwork from 2014, I was terribly afraid of not using lines in my artwork and that's still something that I kind of do now, but instead of really being afraid of edges, it's really just realizing that I love drawing a lot more than I do painting. So it's more something that I can embrace easily now instead of just be afraid of it. Here, this is one of the most difficult things to do when you're shading is that really light transition between the nose. I didn't want to have too much of a line there, but there needs to be a transition so you know the nose isn't connected to the other side of the face. And so I was struggling with that. Um, and then now I'm switching over to uh, emphasizing the lower eyelid form as it wraps under the eye, eye eyeball. <laughs> um, this is something that I also really like to do. Um, it's possible to just represent the eyelid as lines, but I really like it when I see them in forms like that. Um, and something that I like to keep in my style all the time. And now you can see I'm grabbing at some of the references for colors, but to be completely honest, that really didn't help much. <laughs> I mean, I could have picked this blue color. This is completely unrealistic and I could have picked this myself. I found that if you want to pick colors from a reference like that, you really have to stick to it and do it from the get go. Otherwise, you're just mixing in realistic colors with these like fantasy colors that I'm using and it doesn't really work well. Now I'm erasing a lot of the sketch lines from the upper eyelids and trying to get in some variation, um, adding some loose, just scratchy little sketch strokes in there that I can use later on to help me um, draw attention to the eyes. 
Going back to add some shadow there. I did way too much on the cheek, but that's why we have the blend tool. Super useful, or the smudge tool. Love that in Procreate. Speaking of Procreate, um, I am not using the beta right now for this piece because I didn't want to spend all the time to convert, to add my brushes in because we can't really import them just yet. Um, or at least on my version, I can't. But um, I tried to use Adobe Fresco to start this off with, but I quickly realized that it would be way too big of a learning curve to just switch to for this video. Um, and <laughs> I quickly abandoned that. And I'm really glad that I did because I learned quite a bit of things about working in Procreate with this piece because it was so challenging. Now I'm just filling in the eyebrows. I don't really like to add too much detail to the eyebrows. It's really boring for me, but I guess I, <laughs> I at some point I was like, okay, I need to add in some detail, even though it's going to be basically, you know, a block of color. I'm still going to add in some strokes there and make it um, realistic eventually. And I'm just doing a flat color for the hair. I know she wants, to, I know her hair is going to be blue because of my original design. And um, so I just decided to go ahead and put it in there. There's no reason to wait on it. And right now, what you see me trying to do is using a blending mode, a color blending mode or the hue blending mode to make her face look a little bit more, you know, lifelike and human. Um, I It's actually not bad, but I still was trying to use the blending mode to get it to look what I wanted to. And I'm, I still struggle with this. And I think in the future, I'm going to do a, definitely going to do a study of a portrait and just use colors from the image and use that to learn what colors I should use. If you've noticed, or maybe you haven't noticed, I'm really not using the reference that much. And I just left it on the screen as kind of just something to encourage me that I'm actually going to end up with something realistic. But at this point, I'm really just going on my own and trying my best to look at references online and trying to figure out what would be the best for me, um, best option to get these colors looking right. So what's going on here is I just finished up um, using a whole blending mode for the face, but I realized the ear hadn't had any attention to it, so I wanted to quickly fill that in. And then I erased some of that space for the lips because I knew the lips needed to stay pink, so I didn't need to have that skin tone on it. And here I was trying different um, blending modes again, and I ended up settling for the color blending mode. <laughs> and you can see her face looks kind of like this greenish pale thing, so I quickly started adding in some red. The one thing I do know for coloring faces is that you want to have red across the face, in the middle of the nose, on the nose, on the lips, and on the cheekbones area. Um, that's something that's always I always see in every portrait. So, and here, since she's a space girl and her body is just you know this uh, grouping of galaxies, <laughs> like a view into different galaxies, I decided to just make it all matted black uh, for now. I got a different reference in. I realized I wasn't really using that one much, especially since it was color now. So I pulled this one in. This is how I originally wanted all of the tones to look. I'm going to tell you right now, I did not end up with that at all, <laughs> um, but it, it still helped me with some guidance. My main color um, inspiration for this piece was going to be using uh, cyan, magenta, and a little bit of um, a very bright, punchy orange color. That's something I wanted to use. I've really been interested in that kind of color grouping for a while and I wanted to use it in this piece. So I found references that had that and looked like they did it well, like her with her cheeks, um, to help me to help guide me. You can see I was a bit confused there, just zooming in and out and trying different things for how to approach adding the first level of detail to the hair. And I just decided to add a lighter color and scribble in the highlights with my uh, fantasy hairbrush which actually turned out to be pretty helpful. And I'm glad I did this. And I think if I put in a little bit more effort and believed in myself that I was making scratches, I mean, making strokes that were actually gonna be accurate, then I could have ended up with more realistic hair by the end. And now you can see I'm drawing kind of her little power cells and her, her um, <laughs> I don't know what they're gonna be like planets or just balls of energy, but I pulled up the galaxy image um, just to give me an idea for what colors I should use later on. So now what has happened is I'm actually looking at um, the recording, the screen recording of the iPad while I was working. Um, this is something that I realized I had to do. I couldn't keep filming the same way that I was. I was getting really uncomfortable and I needed to be able to move around and paint. So I kind of moved on, uh, did it, sat in a different position with the iPad on my lap and kept going. 
Um, this probably isn't going to be as helpful for you guys, but I'm still going to try to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing. Um, and hopefully that this can be useful and you guys can learn something from it. But as you can see, I pulled up some references really quick um, right before I finished talking and I was using them to kind of fill in the lips and I immediately noticed she had this super goth kind of grungy look to her. So I was like, uh, I've got to really save this. That's not what I was attending, but I was like, eh, you know, it's not bad. It works. <laughs> I'm glad she has a look to her. You know, that's the most important thing about a character. Maybe she's just taking her own path and I'm just here for the ride. And you saw me add the highlights in there, something I really, really loved how they came out. I think it's because I added a lot of depth and saturation into the area in between her lips and then let them kind of fade out into a brighter pink at the bottom of the lip. And for the eyes, I'm adding this again with the cyan, the orange yellowy color and the pink color. I wanted to use that for her eyes. Um, I wanted them to be very ethereal, not really um, realistic eyes at all. And um, it's always a struggle for eyes because they require so much detail and finesse to them, but I think I did a really good job this time. I was able to get the transition between the wet eye down to the skin pretty good. You can hear my computer is really not happy <laughs> with how things are looking. Um, but here I'm finally starting the hair. I pulled in this image of Haley Williams. She's kind of like my, like, I don't know, like body type energy vibe ish, whatever <laughs> for designing the rest of her body, which I plan to do. Um, but I ended up not using many of the colors for her hair anyway, because I found a cool blending mode that I liked and I just left it like that and decided to add the details in. And here's where I was playing with how much of her body should I show? Should I show some of her skin? Should I show the blackness going all the way up to her neck? And I never really decided until very close to the end. And I can see what I did here is I added in some shadows into the hair previously, and I'm using um, multiple different hair brushes and strokes and uh, uh, actually the smudge brush to add detail and fidelity to the hair. It ended up looking really flat and um, so I decided to use some blending modes to help darken and lighten some clumps of hair, some groups actually, so that it had more depth to it. Um, you can see there that dark blue that's flashing across the screen is really adding, helping to add some depth. I never actually got to finish the hair completely the way I would have liked, but I think there's some areas that were really suggesting some cool ways that it could be rendered. I think I'm going to add some detail to this after the fact. Um, definitely <laughs> not going to try and finish it to be perfect for this video because I think the goal was achieved for sure. And here I, I kind of finished up with the hair and I'm starting to look at the piece as a whole, erasing some of the extra lines there and uh, clearing out the eyelashes. I wanted to make sure those stood out and her little strobes of hair that fly off. I'm starting to pay attention to those. One thing that I just did there is I made them opaque because they were um, they were very translucent and I needed them to be opaque so that I could keep them over um, her body so that they wouldn't uh, change color as the background changed to her skin and the galaxy um, image. So here I don't really have a reference. I'm just doing the best I can to create a couple new brushes to help with the hair and those strands look better. <laughs> I ended up changing the shape actually quite a bit for the strands on her right side so that they would look more believable. And yeah, I could basically keep going with this. I decided to keep her neck all in black and add this nice little fade effect to it. Um, I did some color adjusting in my favorite app to do in ultralight. Um, and I, I think that turned out pretty well, but it ended up making her look really sunburnt to be honest. But I was like, all right, no, it's not that bad. You can see there I'm adding the galaxy in there. I think it's pretty cool, but I don't know if I'm going to settle with it. I definitely do plan to edit a lot of it with my own brushes and stuff and my own tastes later on. But yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with how this came out. You can see I lightened up the lips just a little bit there. I felt like they were a little bit too red and just cleaning up some stuff, adding some last minute details. I was trying out something there that didn't really work out. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the final product. I'll catch you when I finish. So I turned the lights down really low so that you guys could see all of the colors that I managed to do with the final piece. Um, this is Soraya, Queen of the Universe, <laughs> redesigned. I hope you all really like how it turned out because I really do. Um, this is 
I think the farthest I've pushed myself when it comes to color that I've ever done. Um, and I have learned so much from this piece and I had to stop myself because I kept learning and learning and wanting to fix more and more. And I just had to take a break and be like, all right, the next piece, we're going to do the new things that I learned. Um, and again, big thank you to BenQ. This monitor is amazing. I can really look one to one and really get a good um, read of how my image is working and looking while I'm working with it. And um, they sponsored this video so <laughs> big shout out to them link for their product will be in the description box below so without further ado that's it everyone thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video peace